morning, everyone. Happy Friday, and uh, this is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. We're going to do a quick uh, weather video blog for you this morning because we've got some uh, impactful weather uh, heading our way for the next couple of days before kind of August in October resumes on Sunday and continues into next week. First things first, let's uh, take a look at a kind of a specialty uh, satellite product this morning. Uh, this can pick out fog at night, and uh, we did have some fog formation overnight. Everywhere where you see a little bit of a, a blue tinge, uh, we had some fog that set up. It was not everywhere, but uh, locally thick fog for a time early this morning. Uh, it is fading away as I'm recording this at about 8.30, and I don't expect the fog to be much of a problem from here on out. All right, a broad view of the radar across the region. We have low pressure spinning across the upper Midwest this morning. Uh, not much on the radar here locally, and I expect it to stay largely dry for the, uh, the rest of the morning. All of this is kind of spinning around an area of low pressure in the upper levels, which has kind of been stuck. It's what we call a cutoff low. Uh, it missed, missed its ride along the jet stream, which retreated well off to the north up into Canada. And so this thing's just been kind of meandering around, but it's starting to make a little bit of north and eastward progress. And as it makes its closest pass to our region, uh, I would expect some active weather um, over the next 24 to 36 hours. The center of that low near Chicago right now, it's heading up in this direction. It'll be off the playing field by Sunday. And again, we're back to quiet weather at the end of the weekend. Here's a look outside at uh, about 8.20 a.m. this morning. Uh, we're looking at a camera that's perched upon our uh, transmitter tower on the south side of Youngstown. We're looking down at the shallow fog layer here. Um, again, visibility locally reduced for a time, but this fog is starting to lift as we speak. All right, so we have high school football this evening. We have uh, YSU with a game tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. in Youngstown. Let's talk about uh, potential weather impacts. I'm not expecting much in the way of shower activity through at least mid-afternoon today. This is the simulated radar taking us all the way through, let's say, 3 o'clock. Uh, showers starting to maybe pop up here and there by about 3 down towards southeast Ohio, uh, closer to Dover, New Philly, back towards Mount Vernon and Columbus. But as we head towards the evening, and unfortunately in time for high school football, I would expect our showers to become more and more numerous. So this is the simulated radar at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. This is going to be a lot like we had yesterday in that it'll be fairly hit or miss. Some places won't see much rain. Some places could have a pretty good downpour. And uh, that threat for wet weather will continue for most of the evening. But it's going to be fairly disorganized, loosely organized, and it's hard to say exactly who's going to get a downpour and who's not. Everyone has about the same chance of a, uh, a pretty decent shower and perhaps even a thunderstorm. Now, Thunder and lightning would be bad news. They'll play football through the rain, of course, but if we have some lightning, it can lead to some delays. And here's a look at uh, one of our models' depiction of the amount of lightning uh, present in the atmosphere as we go through time. We're looking for brighter colors. Um, that means more frequent lightning. And so by early this evening, here's uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you can see there's not a lot of lightning around. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. A couple of strokes here and there. I'm not expecting a huge amount of lightning out there this evening. Mostly annoying showers with the possibility of some claps of thunder and some bolts of lightning. We'll cross our fingers we don't have too much lightning. We'll also cross our fingers that we won't have localized flash flooding issues. We had that yesterday uh, with a little too much rain at one time, especially in kind of the Poland to Youngstown corridor and also in extreme northwestern Mahoning County, southwestern Trumbull County. Those are the two trouble spots. We had a couple of inches of rain out towards uh, Lake Milton, Craig Beach, up into Newton Falls. I can't rule out some, some localized flooding issues this evening. If we get some training of these showers, in other words, they move over the same places a couple of different times, uh, we might have some, some localized issues. Then, real quickly, uh, a brief word about tomorrow's YSU game, 2 p.m. kickoff. Uh, kind of a similar setup in that there'll be showers here and there, outside chance of lightning and thunder, but a chance and the chances of wet weather will diminish after the game, after about 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and then we should be dry for the rest of the weekend. If you're looking forward to some autumnal chill, this isn't your forecast for the next week. Here's a look at some model data for the next 16 days, and you can see that uh, we're going to be well above the average all the way through the end of next week. This is next Friday, right here, the 15th. Then next weekend, while it's not exactly cold, 
we may see a cold front that knocks temperatures back to about average, maybe just a tinge below average by next weekend. So that's the next opportunity for um, some sort of typical October weather. It's probably not going to come with a frost and freeze threat, but it will at least feel a little more like October in about eight to nine days. But for the next seven days, don't put away the shorts just yet. All right, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thanks for watching this morning. I'll see you this evening on 21 News at both 6 and 11.